of days, I have been traveling in states where obviously helmets are optional for adults. I've seen a fair number of riders riding without helmets, and I'm not going to turn this into a pro helmet or anti helmet or personal choice snippet. Um, just a few observations. Just as I was starting motorcycling, uh, helmets became mandatory in Canada. Uh, maybe the year before, most guys I knew were, were wearing helmets anyway. And these were the, you know, the old, you know, uh, open face helmet. The open look a little bit like an astronaut's helmet. Or, yeah. And uh, this is what we were all wearing. Full face helmets were just starting to, to come in and become available. So uh, a friend of mine had an accident and uh, well his, his chin hit the pavement. Made a very good divot in his chin. He uh, grew a beard after that to sort of fill that out, and cover the hole. But it impressed me about the fact that if I go down, I would like my face to be protected. So I went out and bought my first full face helmet. Well, it also got sort of pushed because I had come to a stop sign and was going almost zero kilometers or miles per hour at the time and uh, I uh, slipped out on, on oil or transmission fluid or something that had been left by cars and the bike just slipped out from underneath me and I fell to my left side and my head hit the pavement now, you can't stop your head from hitting the pavement. Our heads are darn heavy. It cracked that helmet. And it made me understand that, okay, if I wasn't wearing a helmet, I would probably be lying on that ground waiting for the paramedics. So anyway, I went out and bought my first full face helmet then and I've never I've never stopped. Uh, at some point maybe I'll get a, one of those flip up helmets, but, but for now I've always had full face helmet. On Facebook the other day I saw an interesting uh, statement by a, a senior senior motorcyclist who stated that in the U.S. 41% of all motorcycle fatalities were wearing a helmet. So this meant that, what, 59% were not. And his argument was, well, if uh, almost half of all the fatalities were wearing a helmet, then how useful is that helmet? Why should they make me wear a helmet? Of course, he was looking at the statistics wrong. This was the statistics on the number of fatalities nationwide in the U.S. What it wasn't looking at and what he wasn't taking into consideration was that most riders wear helmets. Most states require helmets. So, say, uh, ninety percent of, of all So if 90%, say it's 90%, what, what the heck, say 90% of all motorcycle riders 
are wearing helmets. And they account for 41% of the fatalities. Well, that 10% that are not wearing helmets are accounting for 59% of the fatalities. Think about it that way. Do the math. If you get into a motorcycle accident without a helmet, the chances are you are going to have a head injury. The chances are really, really great that you are going to die. When the motorcycle helmets came into into being <coughs> as laws, even the insurance companies were behind it, saying that you know there'll be less deaths, your insurance rates will go down. Well, the insurance companies, you know, they very soon found out that. Uh, Motorcycle helmets did save lives, but they were having to contend with long-term disabilities because a lot of a lot more spinal injuries. So they discovered very, very quickly that a one-time payout in funeral expenses was a lot cheaper than a quadriplegic or paraplegic uh, in a wheelchair who was going to live 60 or 70 years. So no, our insurance rates did not go down when we started wearing helmets, but more people were surviving. Interesting things about helmets. In World War I, when the war broke out, Britain's, Britain's army was wearing soft caps, the, the, the regular army. And uh, of course they were having a lot of a lot of uh, fatalities because once they started trench warfare and both sides learned, oh, I can, I can explode a, a shell over a trench and shower that trench with shrapnel uh, and kill a lot of people. So the British introduced helmets about, uh, we're talking six months, eight months into the war. And then they suddenly discovered something. The hospitalizations due to head wounds jumped dramatically. Uh, top brass got very scared by the statistics and thought, well, maybe we should not have gotten helmets. We've got all these people who are now got head wounds. And it took someone down a lower rank to point out that yes, these are head wounds. They would have been fatalities if it had not been for the helmet. So the helmet was saving a lot of lives and a lot of these guys were being able to go back to the front lines after a couple of months in the hospital. But on initially looking at it, it's like, Ooh, as soon as we introduce helmets, we suddenly have a lot more head wounds. In World War II, they of course were studying airplanes that were coming back from battle. And they were looking at them. They were looking at where they were shot up. And trying to think, okay, uh, We've got to reinforce these areas because these planes have come back and they got holes in their wings, they got holes in their tails. Uh, certain parts of the fuselage, it's like, you know, some of them are pretty bad, they shot up. Um, we should be fixing these, these, these areas. And again, someone pointed out, these are the planes that came back. These are the ones that survived combat. Look at the areas that they did not get shot in, because those are the areas that brought down the planes that did not come back. Oh man. 
Anyway, <laughs> I'm also concentrating on, on riding and I'm really going faster than I want to go today and I'm on hotter roads than I want it to be on. I've had one stop and hydration break. I'm going to have to stop at least every hour and a half and, and hydrate, I can tell. Um, so that was enough, that was more than enough for a snippet. So.